Perfect. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is uh, November 15th. This is our second webinar of the webinar series for ICT, which is the Intuitive Coach Training Program. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Dr. Diddy, and I know a lot of you saw last week's video or watched the replay or over the slide. So thank you so much for coming back. And hopefully you're doing your homework. The mind versus spirit voice. <laughs> Just had to bring that in. Such a teacher. I love that. I love yeah, that. Such a teacher. Um, the My versus Spirit Voice and the other Divine Feminine homework we guys we gave you last week. We're not checking up. We're just I'm rising you a bit. And Lynette, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Lynette Brown. I'm um, Divi's cohort in this in this little uh, adventure. And you know, the one thing I will say is that I'm so excited to be with you guys again and have. And tonight we're going to be talking about something new er newer and i just am really i'm excited to be here i really am i really am so that's me and so um like last week we have a guest who's done ict before so you can meet her and hear from her experiences because lynette and i can talk about it till we're green in the face but sometimes hearing from other people you can always chat with them or ask them questions while they're here but i know tanya's not gonna be here for a long time because she's in a different time zone so we thank her for coming and i'll put her on spotlight in a second but um this is just in case you haven't watched the other webinar, This we're in our fourth year right now of ICT, um, and we're going into our fifth year in 2022. And the reason we, we I literally sent out a few emails to people who have done it before, and they always email back me back within like four hours, like, yes, I want to come. Yes, I want to come. They're so excited to share their experiences of, um, of what their experience was, and we don't have to pull them dragging and screaming. They get so excited. So Tanya's in a totally different time zone. She was in ICT last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think. I think so. Hey, Tanya, just brought you funny. Yeah. She's on an excursion in the Caribbean, and she still is here. Is that's to me like that? Just my brain is. Yeah. I think the bigger message is if you want to have a job that is successful, run your own business and also be in Guadalupe, take the ICT course. <laughs> I think that's the like wider message for the group, if I'm being completely honest, because I could not have dreamed nor believed that this could be my life in 2019. Like I took the course in 2020 and I started working with Divi one-on-one -on -one in 2019 and things were, you know, changing and, and growing and all good things. But there's something about being in a container week after week with the same people and having that kind of accountability, to be completely honest, because I don't know about the other students that are listening, but like how many people buy courses with the best of intentions? And then it's like maybe a 10 week course and by like week three, you're just like, oh, not for me. And you never finish it. Right. So the ICT is so good because you have the opportunity to be with a group of people that you do actually like really get to know on a soul level, if I can say that. Um, I'm thinking like some of my closest friends today, even like I talk to somebody from ICT probably every day. Um, and so the community is just incredible how it's, you know, kind of stuck together. I'm even thinking back like Aaliyah. I had never met her. She was somebody in my pod group, but she was driving from Victoria to Oakville, so Toronto area. And I live in Saskatchewan when I'm not gallivanting. And so like I drove to a city and I met her for lunch and she was driving through and it was just like meeting my sister, right? Like that is truly what happens in the container over the 12 months. So certainly that's a huge bonus. And then like your life will just change drastically. And so if you're not interested in growth and being happy and making money, I mean, maybe it's not for you, <laughs> but like, I kind of feel like those are all real positive things. So um, yeah, I have nothing but good to say about it. Um, yeah, Divi Lynette, did you have specific things that you wanted me to speak to about? No, just really, just whatever's on comes for you, right? I mean, We've told them that we're not giving you guys any scripts. We're just asking people to come on, share their experience and mm -hmm. how they, you know, what, how they use the course, right? How, you know, like you said, now you're able to travel and doing, not that yeah. you weren't traveling before, but you know, what you're, what it brought into you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think maybe if I could just say one thing to the students that are listening, um, if you don't feel like you're very advanced in this work, it is not a problem. If you are feeling the call or the guidance to join the group, it's probably going to be a fit. Um, I was somebody sort of as a tax accountant for over a decade and not really 
fluent in any of this work when I started the course. I definitely felt like I was kind of behind the curve, but everybody kind of grows and develops at their own pace. And yeah, if you're feeling like it's interesting, you feel that nudge, I would just strongly encourage you to just, you know, take a bit of a leap and, and do it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. I don't know if I have anything else to say. I don't know if that's, oh, that's long enough. Perfect. But... That's beautiful right there. It's perfect. I love it. <laughs> and we didn't pay her. We swear we didn't pay her. Right, right. Or tell her what to say. No. Right. No, I actually didn't know that every, like, I do know that a lot of the groups stay in touch. I do know that. But I don't know who stays in touch with who. I don't know right. who's on speed dial. I don't know that Aliyah visits in Saskatoon, right? Mm -hmm. um, I keep in touch with people myself. Like, if I'm in Toronto, I'd give Aliyah a call. I don't think she's there right now, but anyways. Um, but if I was in a different city where one of our students' clients lived, I would call them in a heartbeat. Um, yeah. But I just haven't been. <laughs> so, yeah. but it is the nature of what happens with this work is you do form these, these bonds that we find last a lifetime. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's pretty special. Awesome. Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great zone, evening. So we will allow you to take off. <laughs> That sounds great. Take care. Bye, Thanks, honey. Thanks, Tanya. Bye, honey. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, we like I said, we we didn't pay her. Um, she <laughs> swear we didn't. It's cool though to right to totally. present to that and see what she experienced, right? What what she went through in her own words, not you know just basically sharing with you guys like what it was for her, right? And it's different for everybody, right? Right. 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 And yeah, so I think, she, I don't know if she's left or not, but um, if she's still here, you feel free to message her if you want, you don't have to, or can ask us if you have any questions, but maybe we'll just jump into the process. Yeah. And I was going to say to people who are watching, um, if you have questions through it, just type them into the chat box and then we can kind of address them as they come up. But Lynette, do you want to start us off? Yeah. So interesting, um, Karen, you're spot on, your intuition's working, like you're already listening, you're, you're already getting guidance because we are talking about ancestors tonight, right? We, we're, we are looking at, we're actually adding more ancestral work into every year we build, we shift and change the ICT program, like how it's you know, what's shown up, more material to add, more, you know, more practices, that sort of thing, right, Divi? We are just, we're listening to our guidance, and this is one of the things that came through. Now, we've always worked with our ancestral work in the ICT program, and this, now we're going to shift it into where there's going to be more of a focus on ancestors, right? So you probably wonder, or you maybe, or maybe not, I know I would be, it's like, wait, what's, what's all the huff and puff about, right? What's an ancestor, right? Well, my great, great grandmother, right? But it's also anything or anyone that's given birth to some way of for us, right? In other words, we couldn't be here if it wasn't for that, for them, right? And the importance of working and doing ancestral work comes in with our beliefs, right? And it's so incredible and to remember, to honor those who came before us, even if we didn't know them or even if we, we've heard about them and they weren't great people, right? So, you know, there's a lot of um, indigenous beliefs that speak to um, that in, if, if something's not working properly, if your body's not working property, properly, if your, your business or your money's not working properly, most indigenous um, beliefs would tell you to go to your ancestors because it is, a me, it is a belief that you are carrying the lineage of your ancestors and they will continue that lineage is going to continue to affect your lineage after you, right? So in you, your offspring, whatever, it's like this space, this energy is continuing on. And so, you know, even if I didn't know my great, 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 great grandmother, you know, the way that I've been taught and what I believe is that in every lineage, there's somebody who comes forth and says, I'll heal that. 
for my entire lineage. I'll heal the anxiety. I'll heal the stress. I'll heal the addiction. I'll heal the, you know, whatever it is. The I'm not enough. The fear. I'll heal, I'll heal that for the entire lineage. So it's not even just the lineage behind you, but it's the lineage in front of you. Because like, as you've seen, like Divi's taught, you know, about energy, if you've worked with Divi, you know, like the, all the energy is, it's not just one way, right? It goes in a bunch of different directions. Um, the ancient ones, when there was like sickness in the body, when there was something that was happening, the land or whatever, wasn't fertile or bringing forth what they needed immediately they went to the ancestors because they knew that their ancestors were going to support them. And it's not in just, you know, um, an undeveloped religion or archetype. It is, it is about knowing that that's what's true, that the energy is real, right? Because we all came from somewhere right? We all came from someone. And that connection never leaves us, whether it's the lands we were born to or claim as ours, or, you know, our parents. And so we want, want, we want to acknowledge this work that comes up for us in times when we're feeling discomfort or anxiety, and we don't know what it is. And we're like, wait, everything's going great. Well, it could be ancestral, right? And so in working with that, we're able to turn and face and see that in our lineage, in ourselves and clear it, not judge ourselves, not be in the space of like, where did it come? It's like, wow, this feels old, right? When you're working with your intuition and energy, you start to get the sense of how things like, oh, this is heavy. This feels old, right? So let me go, you know, do some ancestor work. And it might be, you know, you might be asking yourself, why do I want to do what's in it for me? Why, why do I want to do this weird, you know, well, that's the shaman people over there and that's the Rudy Toot Tooty people over there. And I'm going to look weird and I'm not going to put a feather and flow around and, and, you know, start a fire and start, no, 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 no. The reason we do ancestor work is when, if we do it continually, believe it or not, we've seen that there's, it heals intergenerational patterns. So if you, like in our money module, we talk about, you know, your beliefs around money, you know, and so this is the same thing is like where that came from. You know, where did that, these patterns of lack, where did it come from? Maybe it's not your parents. Maybe it's your great, 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 great on your mother, father's side from whatever, right? And even the energy of a dysfunction, invulnerability, you know, arrogant, you know, all those kind of things, all these things, we can work with our ancestors to start to understand these patterns and transform them because it's not something it it's not something that's super logical it's not something you can point to and go oh i'm feeling the curse of you know of my of my great grandfather and the french revolution <laughs> right i'm not saying it's like that it's more like all of a sudden there's this anxiety there's something that rises up, this energy comes up and it might be how you, you sabotage and block yourself every time success is coming down the way. It might be what's keeping you from having the business or what it is, whatever it is you want, right? It could be in your lineage. And you said, I'll be the one, I'll be the one, right? Um, the interesting thing is the pain, the unforgiveness, and even when it doesn't necessarily pertain to you, maybe it's something way back, you know, centuries, 
But the fact that that energy, because we cannot destroy energy, right? That energy comes all the way through to you and you can do something with it. Think about what that does, not just for you, but your family, your friends, your community, for the world, dare I say so grandiosely, right? You know, because what you do does impact the world, right? Um, the other thing we, I have seen my experience and Divi's going to share hers in, in a little bit. My experience is I have really found myself and, and come face to face with me, Lynette and all her fears in working with my ancestors. Like it's uncomfortable. It's like me, you know, but in order to continue to grow. It's like being willing to look in the roots and go into the roots, right? Get in, that's where the, our ancestors are, right? In the dirt, right? Um, one of the things that is real important around working with an, your ancestors is creating that connection. Whether it's pretend, imagined, or you truly believe it, right? So if this is like having you go, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not going to start connecting with my ancient ancestors, and right? Let's just pretend, right? If that's where you are, like, don't, let's just work with the energy and the, the idea of it, Okay. Debbie, you want to share with you for you, baby? Sure. Um, so I myself, as most of you know, have a bit more of a limited knowledge of my ancestors because my parents immigrated. So we're the only family here in North America until I was an adult and then some cousins and stuff came over. So working with my ancestors and, so my, and also being my parents who they are and the time they are, they've been on the planet, they don't really talk about their childhood. They don't talk about their stories. But it's only been through working with my ancestors that I've been able to understand aspects of me that I had no idea why they were there. So, you know, there's a part of me that just wants to hide all the time. There's a part of me that really believes that her worth is of being of service to a male, right? I mean, I'm Indian, but also, um, you know, if you look back at the lineage, right? It's like, okay, I can see where this comes from, right? And there's no judgment of it, but it's seeing how we swapped out our worth and why. And rather than just blaming our parents or putting it on them that they didn't do their work, it's like a deep understanding that there was a root in a history way back. In fact, I was having coffee with a girlfriend yesterday who's also East Indian. And so we were just chatting and drinking coffee. And, um, and she was sharing how she, she comes from a family lineage where all of the women in her family, her mom, her aunts, all her grandparents, all of the women have been physically abused by their partners. Quite, quite bad. She goes, but Divi, I don't get it. We come from the land of Kama Sutra. Like we're supposed to be powerful women, right? And then we la we like just burst a laughter. And then she looked at me, she goes, I blame it on colonialism. And then we both had this like aha moment of like, wait a second. You know that, and we both Googled how long ago did you know the Brits and it was like almost laughter, but also some seriousness right. of where did we as females in the in all females, where did we lose that? And so for me, working with my ancestors has really given me an understanding of where some of my stories come from, because I can't just blame it on the 18 years I spent with my parents, right? Where does it come from? Some of it's so deeply ingrained in me that it makes absolutely no sense. But like I was, especially for those of us who have kids, you know, we think of the impact on our kids and we watch their quirkiness. We're like, oh God, there's no way that quirkiness isn't going to be in my grandkids, my great kids. I'm not going to be here probably for the great grandkids because I was old when I had my kid, right? And, you know, it's understanding that that, I call it quirkiness, but that behaviors, which are typically from traumas that I went through, are going to be in my great grandchildren, are going to be in my great, great, great grandchildren, unless somebody stops that pattern. And so, you know, if you're coming to this type of work, like Tanya was saying, it's because you want to heal something and you want to help other people heal. And maybe it's just for healing yourself, which is perfect. But my work in terms of healing really took off when I was really dwelled, like dove into the ancestral work because it was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. And, it, and within that making sense is a huge amount of forgiveness, but it's not up here. It's here. Because not, nothing really happens up in our heads, nothing. 
<laughs> but that's one thing we find at ICT a lot because like Tanya talked about, it's a container of safety. And I find with my clients that I work with, in fact, I got an email from a client who wants to work with me and I don't have a spot. And she made it clear to me, she said, but I only trust you. Trust is a huge part of healing. In fact, it's probably the most important part, to be honest. Mm -hmm. She said, I've met a lot of coaches and a lot of therapists, but there's something about you, Divi, that I trust. Right? And that's what happens in your course is when you have a group of people that you trust, and you won't on the first class, don't worry, <laughs> but very soon, then your walls start to drop and then healing is just exponential because healing in a container, I have found is so much, I don't want to say more powerful, but powerful in a different way than one-to-one. -one. Wouldn't you say, Lena? Oh, a hundred percent. It's amplified. Don't you feel? A hundred percent. Because when one person heals something in the container, it does a mirroring effect for everybody. So that trust piece is huge. And trusting it's safe to do this because, you know, I love my husband and some of you know, my husband, he's a great guy. If I sit and talk to him about four generations ago, grandmother in India, he'd be like, can I have a beer? He's a great guy. But like, you know, does he want to talk about it? Probably not. <laughs> so to be around people who do want to talk about it and hold the pain with you and are mm. willing to sit with you so that you can heal. And to be honest, they want, they want me to say to you, everybody's got stuff. Even if right now, cognitively, you don't know, we all have stuff. That's what I would add, Lena. Yeah. I think that, that's it's so beautiful too, honey, because it's that hold that pain, because that's something why we won't go down into the roots and why we won't take a look, you know, and work with our ancestors because we don't want to come face to face with that pain, right? And like you're talking about, just feeling that. And, you know, me too. I have my family, my DNA is Russian and Cajun French. And so I'm a very, as you can probably imagine from just those two, very um, direct and very, very, that whole, right? And part of what I've learned in working with, you know, my dad stuff, the things that that part of my ancestry that I didn't understand or know was that I was able to not only just forgive that whole situation and the circumstance, but really embrace like, yeah, yeah, I can be, I can be that Ukrainian badass, you know, I can be that, you know, Cajun French girl that's like, oh, yeah, I can cook up a storm. Yeah. So, you know, it's that it's one of the things that um, one of my teachers told me, she said, you can only, you can only always be your parents' child. Hmm. You can be all the other descriptors of who you are, but you come from your mother and your father. You come from those offerings, whether it's, you know, in the test tube or in real life or even adopted, right? So it's very powerful to realize that connection that even though things might not be great or that you've heard about your ancestry, you know, tough things that you've heard about it. It's like, wow, this is what I'm here to, to heal and move through, right? Did you want anything? Uh, Kieran wrote in, I feel you can only be totally free when you embrace your lineage from both sides. 100%. The lineage, the fear, the pain, the traumas, that what they went through, right? And I have, I'll give you guys a, almost a funny example because it's coming in. I have this client who's um, Canadian, um, Canadian, second or third generation here. And he, he can't figure out why he um, buys soup and potatoes and like always has his like pantry stocked. He's very wealthy. He doesn't run out of money. He even has somebody who shops for him and I'm not joking. And he was in a session the other day or this is a long time ago, it was a while ago. And not, not joking. He said to me, I don't understand this pattern of mine. It's not obsessive compulsive, it's not perfectionism, but I, I cannot see the pantry empty at all. So I tuned in, I asked, and immediately they showed me potatoes. I'm like, potatoes, okay. Then they showed me Ireland. And I said, potatoes, Ireland, I didn't know he was Irish. I didn't know much about the potato famine. I mean, I, you know, I went to history class, but I don't remember it to be honest. And I said those two words, he went, oh, his jaw hit the floor. It was like, boom, 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 made sense. And that's where his power was to shift it. Because before it was like this almost behavior that he described as obsessive that took over his brain. And as soon as I said those two words, he was like, oh, potato famine. 
and he just, he clicked it all together. I didn't know he was Irish, second or third generation. Especially those of us who are, you know, in Vancouver, Canada, we're always, we associate ourselves with the city we're in, right? So I share that story with you because there can be such healing just from the smallest things of awareness, right? So and even, and even to the point of the ancestry of the land you may be currently renting, you know, space <laughs> on, right? Yep. Um, because, you know, that paying, acknowledging and paying homage to the original you know, ancestors who walked that land, who, you know, created that space, you know, that's who you're standing on, right? It's a powerful space. Powerful, powerful. So we don't have any questions. We want to, you want to, so we're going to do a meditation. I'm going to take you through a meditation and to a, um, into a gateway where you can connect with some of your ancestors. And if even if you don't know who they are or were, don't worry, right? Someone's going to show up for you, right? To be there. Is there any questions before we get started? No. Nope. Feel free to type them in in case I can't see your hand up. Just type them in. We're good to go. Okay, yeah. I think we're good to go. Okay, good. All right. So everybody, just go into your relaxation space. Relax your body. Let your environment just fall away. Notice your breathing. Deepen your breath. Deep belly breaths. In and out. And allow your body just to be in a comfortable position. And close your eyes and just follow the sound of my voice. I'm going to come count back from 13. And there's no need for you to visualize the numbers. Just going deeper into relaxation. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Continuing your deep breathing and allowing your body to continue to relax. On the screen of your mind, picture or imagine a giant tree bigger than any tree you've ever seen. This is the world tree, a gateway between the worlds. And imagine the screen of your mind is a doorway, a portal you can easily move through. So see yourself stepping through and standing before this great tree. Hear the wind in its branches. Smell the earth where the roots are digging in. See yourself or imagine yourself, you're reaching out and feeling, actually touching the bark, the roughness. And as you keep your hands on the bark, hold the intention of finding and connecting with an ancestor to help you in your part to restore balance to the world. We're using this in a global way, right? Breathing in. You may even look to the roots for an opening. Look around the roots and notice there's an opening. 
and step into the opening, which leads you to a tunnel. And this tunnel slopes gently downward. Follow that tunnel down. You feel safe. Continue to follow the tunnel as it spirals down. And at the end of the tunnel, you see a light flickering like a fire. Walk towards the light. And you notice the tunnel ends in a forest clearing. There is a magnificent fire in the middle of this clearing. And around the fire is the energy of your ancestors, the spirits of your ancestors. Your ancestors are dancing or simply standing and watching the fire. And you wait on the edge of the clearing until one of them breaks away and comes to join you. It may be someone you knew or know in this life, or it may be someone from a much distant past. And it can be an ancestor of blood or an ancestor of spirit. someone that was like a father. And if you don't recognize your ancestor, don't worry about it, relax and introduce yourself just like you would if you were at a party. And ask this ancestor, for any wisdom or guidance about your role and your purpose in your life. Maybe what's the next step? What is my offering or service? How can I make a difference? What wisdom can your ancestors give you to support you this week with whatever is showing up for you? And ask any questions you have. I'm going to be quiet for just a moment so that you can connect. And I hear them saying, you know, there's things like, why am I, why do I always seem to be late? Things or habits like that. Those are, the, you can ask any question. Why does my sister irritate me so much? This is a practical way to connect with your ancestors and just listen to what they have to say, what this energy may provide you. And you may notice that they will give you a gift for you to work with, to help you with your work. Maybe it's something to help you remember their conversation or something you will understand later that will support your new adventure, your new choices. And now it would be appropriate to give a gift to your ancestor. So see yourself offering a gift to your ancestor, thanking them for coming over and connecting with you.
notice how your heart feels thankful and grateful for this opportunity to work with them, even if it's on this very simple and subtle level right now. And in a moment, we're going to come back. So anything, any parting words or connection you want to say with your ancestor, maybe give them a hug, say you'll see them soon. And find the tunnel again. Enter it, the root of the world tree. Follow it as it slopes to and fro. Follow the tunnel up, up until you are once again at the base of the world tree. And notice your hands are still touching the bark of that tree. And hold your hands to that bark of the tree and offer thanks and appreciation for this journey. And then see yourself stepping back through the screen of your mind, bringing yourself back to this space, to this container, coming back, back into this space and time Opening your eyes, maybe wiggling your arms, stretching. I know for me, the first time that I did this these simple visualizations and connecting with my ancestors I was like yeah okay I think I'm making stuff up but whatever right and I incrementally slowly but surely started feeling better and things my issues around this or that like Divi was mentioning started falling away you know being aware of the edge you know, of the things that there is, you know, and it's amazing the awareness that will come through for you. Diff, you want to say something, honey? Yeah, it's really powerful. <laughs> um, and it can, it can activate some stuff for us. Mm -hmm. Good point. You know, right. And a lot of people have traumas that they were never able to heal. And I always remind my clients, you know, this concept of like, get a therapist, get a coach, right? That's definitely not my parents' generation, let alone my grandparents' generation. It was pure survival, pure putting food on the table, pure like staying alive, at least where I come from, okay? And let's get money and live life, right? And have fun. But, you know, this idea of looking at our patterns is a relatively, at least in my lineage, a newer concept. So I could feel some of you, I know for myself, even you go back and like, ah, oh, you could have dealt with that differently, right? But you don't know what you don't know. And I think that's why a lot of so many light workers are drawn to this type of work because we have put our hands up and said, I'm willing to help heal this lineage pattern. And one thing I might've said last week, but I'm going to say this week, if I didn't, for myself, I couldn't do this work solo, straight up. Okay. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I can read books. I understand. But I personally, and I think this actually applies to the majority of people, need an energy, a container of love to, to work this in because I can totally go down that rabbit hole of anger and resistance and resentment to whatever the story is, okay? Um, and for myself, because I'm highly clairsentient, I feel a lot, having somebody hold me in love gives me the permission to go here, but also gives me the permission to step out and go, right. Right. I can hold mindful awareness for their pain because, you know, at the end of the day, there are atrocities on the planet. I just, this is from a lot of you, I'm tuning into a lot of you. And there are things that just aren't right. 
you know, and, you know, I mentioned land. I mean, I live on native land. A lot of us do here in Vancouver, right? And, you know, it's not right and it's painful, but then how do we, like, if I was doing this solo, I would literally go down the rabbit hole. I couldn't forgive. I wouldn't be able to love you too. We're sisters. I guess. totally got it. And so that's a, like, that's what I find has for me been the most instrumental shift for me because I can, I have every book on my shelf over there. <laughs> What's been instrumental for me is the application of love. Cause I really feel some of you really hit some hard stuff, some strong stuff. Did you feel that too? Yes. Whew. It's like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> like, oh. breathe, 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 breathe. Yeah. And we are all one. Yeah. Your pain is our pain. My pain is your pain. Exactly. And so when Raya, Chanel, Crystal heal something, it does a trickle effect to me. I want to. So that's what I was going to add. Yeah. So powerful. It's such, it's, and it's, it's so interesting how, um, you know, these things impact you, even the things you don't, you might not even know, like my grandparents crossed the iron curtain to come over into the U.S., right? Ill, illegally, right? And so I'm, I remember as a child, people telling me, oh, you better, better not use it. My maiden name was Ironco. So you can imagine, right? It wasn't Smith or Brown or what now is Brown, but it wasn't, you know, anything easy. And um, they're like, oh, you better hide. The commies are going to come get you. They're going to come snatch you up because you're, you're not supposed to be on this land. You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be over in Russia. Right. And so I even, I mean, like I kind of hide out. I don't let people know where I am. Sometimes it's that whole Russian spy thing. I'm like, mm, you don't need to know where I am. <laughs> right. It's like, and it's ridiculous. It, it can stop you from being intimate and vulnerable and connected to the people that you love dearly. And it, you don't even have a clue of what it is. It's not, it's not in your awareness whatsoever. It's running the show. Yeah. Dana wrote in, it was very emotional. Yeah. Oh, Dana, I'm with you, hon. It can be very emotional. No matter how many times you do this. Right. Right. Because there's a lot of pain there. A and that's what we felt like we had to add a module in this part of this work in like, highlight it more because it's so powerful yeah the ancient ones knew what they were doing they were the indigenous they knew they knew how are y'all doing good just want to check in um karen wrote in i noticed my paternal side of the family were showing up wow wow that's awesome yeah they were probably talking to you earlier. That's why you knew we were going to be talking about ancestors, Karen. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows, right? Linda wrote in. She's doing good. Oh, good, good Linda. Good. Good. Anyone else want to share? Type in. How are you guys doing? You're good. Okay. It, um, I was just going to. That's so funny. Um, Ilna? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it right. I wrote in, it takes so much courage. Nick wow. wrote in, it was a very potent meditation. Dana wrote in, she's feeling very heavy for lack of a better description. And Karen wrote in, I actually love this work. So it's different awesome. messages. So Dana, with that heaviness, that could be that you're used to being, I, like for me, most of my life, I stayed up at the top of the tree because I'm like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's right. Just put some rainbows and glitter on it and everything will be fine. Spiritual bypassing 101. So it could be that you're stepping down deeper into your roots and it feels heavier than you, you've not stepped into that space before. And come back up. Make sure you're coming back up the tunnel right and Ilna wrote and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong she wrote that she is doing well but it, and it took a lot of courage and it takes a ton of courage it's so much easier to go through life like this oh it so much is it just oh my gosh oh my gosh it so is <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm getting guided to say this but it's getting coming so loud so many of our illnesses are from this so many illnesses are from this you know, um, there's so many things that we're born into with fear that we don't even realize are in that lineage. Cause I'll ask clients, I had a client today that I was working with. 
He's lovely, he's super intuitive. He actually took one of your intuitive classes, Lynette, one of those mini ones mm -hmm. you did. And um, you'll know who I'm talking about. You'll pick up who he is in a sec. And he has some sinus issues. And he said to me, he, they're on and off. And I've asked him so many times in sessions, so what's the fear of your intuition? He always says none. Came in today, probably because you were teaching this was ancestral work, hit me like this. <laughs> and so he went to some ancestral work and he like literally, boom, 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 it's this person, this person, this person. For the first time, he was open, able to open up his back of his head, release wow. all the energy of the fear or a lot of it. You know what I mean? And it was like, it's not even mine. You know, that's creating all of these issues for him. Right. So it's, it's powerful. I find it such powerful, powerful, powerful work. So there's a reason why they say the sins of the father, right? The sins of the mother, you know, there's a reason. Jessica wrote in, uh, she lost lines on maternal grandfather, grandfather's side came through. Um, lost, okay. She tried to reach me because she gave me a clue this time. Oh it's, my God. I love that. A clue it's this time. Awesome. So yes. amazing. A clue. Pull that thread, baby. Pull that thread. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing, Jessica. And and if you didn't get a whole lot, or if it felt heavy and you didn't feel like you got a gift or information, that's perfect. Right? Just it don't judge that either. You are still in the energy and it might be that you won't receive it and the message until in your dream time tonight, because there's a lot of times we resist receiving it right in waking time until we've done the intuition part of the course. <laughs> Just powerful. Crystal wrote in, I definitely got to feel my lack of patience or care for my aunts, for my ancestors, except my grandfather. Oh. Wow. Wow. Powerful. It's so interesting too, that lack of patience, what that can do, right? For your stress level, for your, you know, everything. It's like, yeah. Uh, Dana wrote in definitely a gift. My paternal grandfather came through, but so much trauma around his death, but she feels so blessed. Wow. So and that trauma, Dana, can can be moved through your lineage because, you know, feeling that trauma and that sorrow, right? Ilna wrote in several generations of hips and, 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 and movement impairment. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In all of the pictures. Wow. Wow. Insane, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy yes. how it just is passed down without us even being conscious of it or even realize, and or our parents realizing they're passing it down to us, right? Yeah. And I keep hearing to say to you, yeah, it can be jarring. And the more often you revisit this, be in a container of love. And the reason I really emphasize that is because most of us, just like Tanya was saying, we're like, yep, I'll go back to that meditation. Yep, oh, and I have so many recordings on my computer, right? I'm like, yeah, I'll go back to, but it's like when you're in this place of telling yourself you're going to an immersion of it, then you will, right? Because that's what I find, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm telling myself I am, then I will. It's powerful. Uh, Chanel wrote in, um, Divi, you mentioned, probably because I picked up you, honey. <laughs> Chanel wrote, Divi, you mentioned your client with sinus problems and that sinus is connected to fear. Is that always the case or could you expand? Um, I'm just put down here, but expand a bit, a little, a little more. Sure, sure. Do you want me to down here or do you want to, do you want to? No, you go for it, baby. Go for it. So sinuses, Chanel, is, so I'm going to go through the most common things. Sinuses is usually uh, frustration and typically sinus blockages. We typically, whether it be from mold or dust or whatever, but energetically, metaphysically is our intuition that's, that's for whatever reason being blocked, either a fear of letting the intuition run clear and that fear might be yours or it could be overuse too, right, Lynette? And that's what right. sometimes, you know, you know, a lot of people who have that. I just, you know, Chanel, I don't have this, but Lynette knows a lot of people who do and I work with some clients that do. So frustration, fear, um, I just heard often it's um, a fear of seeing clearly. So seeing a third eye. So this isn't a blanket, but it's a fear of, they just said, it's a fear of seeing beyond what is. So this is what is physical and then the metaphysical or the truth behind it. 
Okay. So the fear of seeing beyond what is, is the next thing they said to me. So these are all layers. And, um, and the thing is, um, what they're also saying to me is that the only thing that heals, and so some of you were in my class last night on, on Sunday Soul, what do, I, what do I call it? I don't remember what I call it. It was on health. <laughs> I don't remember what I call it, but it was on health last night. And um, what I always teach when it comes to health is we can only heal anything when we're in the vibration of love or above. And it doesn't have to be 100%, it has to be 51%. And most of you are like, yeah, I'm at 51%. Oh my God, I'm barely there, right? So it's like 51%. Can I be a lover above? Or does that frustration, fear, neural pathway run it a little bit? And if it's running it a little bit, then it'll create this discomfort. So not too, I keep there saying she's got stuff to add. What do you got? I think it's, I think it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that we realized and doing research and stuff for our book is that one of the biggest things is the sinus, a lot of intuitives overgive and have the sinus infections and stuff. And that's from overgiving. So we will preach that in the year course, like insane, like stop, ah! right? But notice that i mean because it's something that happens to us too i mean it's like when it's like oh wow I, I i did all these sessions i need whoa i think i need to like take it easy i need to go i need to slow down right it's those kinds of things being present to where you then it it, it eases it doesn't it's not as bad i'm going to um jump to uh Kari's in a second raya writes in does that include allergies yes 100%. it does it does allergies are autoimmune our body fighting ourselves so what are we fighting from Okay. These are great questions. <laughs> yeah, Crystal, I know. <laughs> Crystal says that. Great question. Um, Kari writes in, is this similar to feeling a pain in your forehead when you start meditating? Yes. It, I mean, some of that is, you know, your third eye. And when you're meditating, especially if you're sending energy through your third eye, if you're visualizing some of the toxins or the energy in that third eye chakra can be pulling, you know, falling away and that causes pressure. But always, always, Kari, check if it, you know, your intuition, see if you've been overgiving. Yeah. Like that's the first, because we never look at overgiving. We never do. We're like, oh, it must be the allergies. Not the fact that I, you know, my friend needed me and I stayed up till 3 a.m. Even though I had a, you know, had a meeting at, you know, whatever. Chanel, I want to circle back to you. Um, does that answer your question? I just want to make sure, Chanel, that that spoke to the sinus stuff. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. I just want to be 100 percent sure. Perfect. Awesome. And then Kieran writes in: Is interesting that Lynette, you mentioned asking why one can always be late to arrive places. Is that a common thread with why this is? Is there a common thread as to why that is? No, it's just something I got from the group. I mean, it's like knowing part of it is we don't realize that there's those little things that, you know, they're part of our programming. Have you ever known people who are like habitually late, like habitually late, like really like maybe it's only five minutes every time, but it's always late. I would bet a hundred million dollars that's ancestral. And Chris, the right, sorry. I'm like, I don't have a million dollars, so don't take me up on that. Um, my name's Lynette and I embellish. <laughs> Crystal writes, and will the program support healing the physical body? Oh, 100%. Oh my gosh, right, Divi? I mean, 100%. that's, that's yeah. the first spot. Yeah. That's the first spot we go. Um, and just to be honest, Crystal, how the course started, I don't know if you heard us last week, I might not have said this last week, how the course started was, um, it used to be called the mind body spirit uh, training. And then we changed it to IC tree because most people who finish the training call themselves an intuitive coach and not my body spirit coach. But how it first started was I used to teach all these healing workshops, like for years, Crystal, for years, like probably about six, seven years. And everybody who took those workshops, like they, I would teach them for months and months and months on end. And I had like, Home so many people who did them. And then at a certain point, there was this like pinnacle level where everyone said, Yeah, Divi, this is awesome. I get la, 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 la. I get everything you're teaching, la 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 la. I've healed this la 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 la. But I want to learn the intuition piece. I'm like, <laughs> I can't run like this. I'm like, great. And Lynette has been my coach. And so I said to her, 
I got this problem, <laughs> not asking Lynette to teach the intuition problem. Like, I don't know what to do. These people could be asking. Then one day she said to me, you know, I can help you out if you want. I'm like, sure. So we ran a retreat up in um, Whistler, just, just the intuition part. And it was a huge hit. And that was the formation of ICT, which is at first called my body spirit coaching. But the initial, yeah, so the answer is yes. The long answer is yes. And it's actually a huge part of healing because you're in this container week after week after week, like Tanya talked about. And they just keep saying to me, you cannot not heal. So, yeah. Um, and Karen writes in, do we have lifetime access to the recordings on IC2? Yes, you do, Karen. Yes, you do. And we have a lot of people, Karen, who go back and rewatch them, which I find, kind of, you know, cool, right? Yeah. Very cool. Like, what was it? A couple of the people who were finishing up next month, a couple of them went back and looked at their first couple of um, classes. Like in the January, they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I changed. <laughs> Just looking, looking at who they are in the video, right? It's so powerful. And the crazy thing is, is that most of us, if we don't, do, I know, I know, I can speak a hundred percent for myself. If I'm not working on myself with consciousness, I will be the same January 2022 as I am January 2023. Like I guarantee you that. But I'm always shifting and evolving and growing, so I'm not the same. Okay, but most of us are. I mean, that's right, Lynette. Most of yeah. us are. Okay. Yeah. Kari writes in off topic, but um, I have to tell you this, Divi. As you know from last night, I, had a, I have a sore throat and lost my voice. And I've noticed that every time I drink water, you pick up your bottle and drink it too. Oh, Kari, I love that. That's so great. We're so connected. I love that. Whew. Any other comments, questions? Um, okay, Lena, or uh, again, I might pronounce this right. I do apologize if I am. Donna writes in 30 year migraines seem to be have cleared from crystal ball healing sound baths. Any thoughts? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, it's sound baths. Actually, do you want to go? Do you want me to go? No, you go ahead. Go for it. Um, you know, you're opening up that third eye. Beautiful and awesome. And now, as you even allow in more, what'll happen? That's what I keep getting. And that? Well, in the sound baths, the power of their yeah. resonance and frequency. I mean, there's nothing better. 100%. And the body just knows what to do. 100%. They're great. Any other comments or questions or how are y'all doing? Okay. 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 Oh, wait. Um, so Karen says, so in a nutshell, how do we do the work to heal our lineage and ancestral issues from before? Practices like today like a small little meditation and having a, and creating conversation and seeing like and pulling the thread so of the gift you're giving what does that mean what is this supposed to guide and receiving actual guidance and asking the questions how can i heal this for our lineage how can it you know it's you're being called right and that's part of what we'll dive more into with you know ceremony and all the conversation of creating all that you know in the course Exactly, Karen, have a conversation with them. And in the year, of course, we'll do different ceremonies and different processes a little bit deeper than this. Um, right now, we're sprinkling you guys with. Um, the start, we're just like, take it, take it, take it. Yeah. We're not. Mm -hmm. Don't like, want to lose you on the, on the deep yeah, side. Yeah, this is just like sprinkles right. to get you a taste. So. Right, right. right. Perfect, thanks. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so we will be back next week on the 22nd on Monday. Same Zoom link. I will send you a reminder and also the recording as well. Thank you for showing up live. Thank you for your incredible questions. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. And if there's any questions that come up, please um, ask. Uh, Ilna asks, how does tapping help? Tapping, well, it's, like It's EFT. like the meridian. Well, yeah, and you're hitting meridians. It's the energy. So what you're creating, you know, the, I mean, I, I know EFT. I mean, you're, that's creating a frequency or resonance that's shifting your entire body. And with the words you say, you know, what you're putting in and you're, you know, going here, here, here you know, doing all your thingy. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Blessing to us both. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you, Dana. Have the loveliest night ever. And stay dry if you're in Greater thanks. Vancouver. And Tanya, Enjoy. thanks again, honey. Oh, thank you, Tanya. Love. Sending you all big love. Thank you, Crystal. Bye, Bye. Nick. Have a great Bye. night. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. Thanks, Divi. Thanks, Lynette. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye.